A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by, the healing, by healing the sick. Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming toward him. He said to Philip, Where shall we buy the bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It, was, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the same pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who hadn't eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come to, into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Lawrence. Okay, the feeding of the 5,000. Who likes food? Who's eating food today? Who's had something to eat today? We all like food. Okay, some people just eat to live, and some people seem to live to eat. Though, what about our favourite foods? We've all got our favourite foods as well. Now, a lot depends on where you're from around the world. There's this major food survey that's been done, and it looks at the favourite foods from different regions, from different continents, different parts of the food. Of course, Asia, very different to other parts of the world, as indeed is Australia and New Zealand. It's quite interesting to see in this survey, apparently our favourite food on the North Island is pavlova. But if you're from the South Island, it's a cheese roll. Now, some of us might want to disagree with that survey. How many of us would say pavlova is our favourite food? None. Great survey. That's what happens with statistics, doesn't it? Anyway, so what are our favourite foods? If you were to combine all those results from that global survey, take into account different cultures, different nations, we get a very interesting set of results. Some of them are actually quite predictable, and you probably won't be that surprised as we go through the world's top 10 foods. Number 10 is a croissant from France. Pretty nice. Okay, it needs to be well baked, slightly warm, and the appropriate filling or topping. Designed originally to be dipped into your coffee if you're in France. It was actually designed by accident. It was a famous battle. I won't go into the details. It was a great big battle, and the baker was baking very early in the morning, and he ended up with these croissants, and they were used for the food for the soldiers before, before the battle. Anyway, number nine from America was the cupcake. We all like a cupcake, probably can't eat too many of them. And obviously there'll be plenty of those going around a week on Friday with the awesome Harrington Fashion Show. Next up is tofu, number eight. Bit of surprise on that one. Number six, mochi from Japan. Some people really like that. Some of us may have never heard of it, never tried it. Next up, number six, cellophane noodles. Moving on, tacos from Mexico at number five. Then we get into the more predictable ones. Ramen at number four. A lot of people like a nice bowl of ramen. And there's the great burger coming in at number three. Okay, number three. Next up is sushi at number two. So that can only lead one left, one left for the top pole position, is it? The world's favourite food has to be... Pizza. Okay, world's favourite food apparently is pizza. I guess because we have a lot of variety of flavours and toppings thereon. Well, I was really surprised that Donuts wasn't on there. 
most like a good donut, especially the nice pink ones with the sprinkles on that's sort of caricatured by Homer Simpson's love of the donuts. And I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel a little bit hungry. Anybody else feeling a bit hungry? Okay. Time for a donut, I think. Who would like a donut this morning? Quite a few. Now, we've asked a few people as they came into chapel, and we've had lots of names, so we've had to pick out a random group here. We've got a, a couple of girls, a couple of boys. I'm going to do a bit of a donut thing right now. I have got, I think I've got Isabella Hills, Jesse Chen, Olive McIver, and Tyler Cooper. Is that right? Yeah, are you ready? Are they here? Have we got Jesse? We've got Tyler uh, for the boys, and I've got Isabella and Olive for the girls. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you to all those who stuck their hand up to compete in this. Very simple, 30 seconds, bit of a donut thing just to get us in the food, glorious food mode. If you sit opposite your team partner, who are we going to buddy up with? So you've got to sit opposite each other. We're not doing two girls, two boys. Up to you, I don't mind. It is 2021. Okay, we'll keep it dread. Okay, very simple. You've got to feed Oliver Donut. She's got to feed you a donut in 30 seconds. Jesse, you've got to feed Tyler a donut in 30 seconds. Tyler's got to feed you in 30 seconds. You might want a little bit of hand sanitizer. Okay, and the winner takes the donuts for morning tea. Can we get a camera on this? Okay, so are you ready? 30 seconds. Oh, I forgot one thing. We're going to blindfold you. I just forgot that bit. Sorry, you didn't get that memo, did you? Sorry? Yeah, you're both going to be blindfolded. Okay, we're going to do it without vision. Hence the... Uh... All right. Okay, can you see? Yeah. All right, there we go. Is that over your eyes? Fantastic. Okay. A little bit of fun. 30 seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, oh, careful. Go! 30 seconds. Winner, it depends how much you've eaten. Okay, you've got to be pretty quick, guys. Just stuff it in. Go on, Jesse, shove it in his face. Come on. There he's going. Yeah. There's a whole, do whole donut in. Right. You gotta feed each other. Nearly in. Five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, Jesse. That's out. Just the boys just narrowly take that. Let's give our competitors a round of applause. The fun bit there. Okay. Okay. Now, finish your mouthfuls, clean yourselves up, and we'll just go back to the slides if we can, away from that camera. Fantastic. So, well done. Thank you for willing to participate in front of your peers and your teachers as well. Just as they clean up, just a few final thoughts. We're thinking about food this morning. Food is important. Some people have too much. Some people have too little. We know about that. We've seen the news. We follow the media. And we've seen scenes like this for decades now. Decades that come in around the world from the refugee camps, from the borders, from the places of conflict, from the places of famine, where the crops fell, even from their own streets here in New Zealand. We've seen these people. We've seen them sit down Victoria Street. We've seen them up at McDonald's, down by Five Crossroads. And all sorts of encourages us to think in many different ways. This is a world map. Thank you, guys. This is the world map of hungry children around the world today. Obviously, the bigger the size, the hungrier the children. You can see what's going on in India, particularly. You can see what's going on in Africa. And more increasingly, what's going on in South and Southeast Asia in terms of food supply and malnutrition amongst children. Gandhi said this, the world has enough. The world has enough for everybody's need, but of course we don't have enough 
for everybody's greed. And that's a, a sad truism of human life and existence. There's lots of attitudes we hear about world hunger. Lots of attitudes and opinions we developed often as we don't really think with full information before us. We hear all sorts of stuff, particularly from us, the well-fed. Oh, it's just nature's way of culling the population of the world. They have too many kids. Oh, it's the corrupt governments. It's all sorts of things. We, we think like that all the time. It's not easy to think about the causes of hunger when your bellies are full. Not quite so easy to think about it when you're starving and your ribs are poking through your skin. The United Nations and certain NGOs talk about the 12 myths of world hunger. They've been around a long time. I can't use that clicker. What you've, what's happened at the back? Okay. Lots of myths. I'm not going to go through all these. There's not enough time. But these are myths around our thinking, our hunger. According to those whose very job it is to bring food to the hungry and challenge the unjust structures of our societies and nations. Not enough to go around, nature to blame, we need bigger farms, etc., etc., etc. Lots of thinking around food in that area. The statistics are quite alarming as well. There are 88 million malnourished children every year in the world. 88 million. Okay, a lot of them die from malnutrition. Okay, of those nations that represent the number of hungry children, there's only actually 10 major nations. 60% of them are now in South Asia. What you like to do now is just, who can click their fingers? Okay? Click around. Okay? There's a little campaign that was going around a few years ago now. See so if you can click your fingers in time with mine. I want you to click your fingers, say, every two seconds. Ready? Starting now. The worrying statistic is every click of our finger means three children have died because they're malnourished around the world today. Every click, every three seconds, three children will die of hunger around the world. It's a frightening, scary statistic. 88 children a minute, 6.6 .6 million children die, and these are pre COVID statistics, pre-COVID. And they're from the UN and other NGOs who work in this area. It's quite a scary thought. And because we know it's not just around the world either. It happens here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Our statistics, like most Western democracies, are quite worrying as well. One in four Kiwi kids go to school hungry every day. 290,000 children in New Zealand live in poverty. Some of you have met them. You've seen them at Fairfield. You've seen them at Bankwood. You've seen those hungry kids. You've interacted with them, read to them, played with them in the playground. We also go out and work with this amazing organisation, the Serve. The Serve is a feeding programme centred in the Working Men's Club in Hamilton. It feeds a hot meal every single day of the year, 365 days a year. And our students make up one of those awesome teams that go there, bringing the food, serving meals to 60 to 90 people. We meet all sorts of people there. We meet people who sleep under the bridges. We meet the homeless who sleep in their cars. We meet families with their kids. We meet elderly people. We meet people whose lives are so disturbed they spend half their lives in the Henry Bennett Centre. We meet people on the fringes of the gangs who've got badly affected by that lifestyle. We also have met a few teachers, people who simply run out of money at the end of the year, end of the month rather, and they can't afford to pay their rent. We often see a primary school teacher there who's desperately trying to live her life without kind of accessing too many handouts. It's an amazing project. 75% of tomorrow's Mufti Day proceeds, it's a $5 Mufti, will be going to help out provide meals for the Hamilton people through the serve. We've had an urgent appeal from Flame in Cambodia. So the other 25% of what we raise tomorrow will go out to Phnom Penh. During 2020, Cambodia did quite well during COVID. And then on the 20th of February this year, six workers had come in from another country, went into managed isolation. 
they were infected with COVID, they decided to escape and go nightclubbing. Now, nearly a thousand people a day in Phnom Penh and the rest of Cambodia have been infected with COVID. It spread like wildfire because of these six people. It's brought the nation already struggling almost to its knees. People have been evicted from even the slums and they're being forced to live like this on the streets. Again, these are some of these people we know. And Flame are currently supporting 69 families who are living like that, part of their education programs, and they're trying to literally provide them with food to keep them alive. They are starving. So that's 25% of where tomorrow's Mufti will go. It doesn't take a lot to feed 20, 69 families. 1,400 US dollars a month will feed 69 families in Phnom Penh. So that's what the food theme is about. That's what tomorrow is about. That Bible reading we had earlier, just in conclusion, was a miracle. We call it the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. For a lot of people, you're right, Jack? Early morning. For a lot of people, this is kind of like a magic trick. He's taken a small amount of food, somehow done an abracadabra, multiplied it, and suddenly everybody's got enough to eat. Some scholars think something different happened that day. Perhaps something less magical, less supernatural, but much more miraculous. 5,000 people turned up, they rocked up to hear this guy speak. They've seen what he was capable of, they were trying to, they were flocking to him. They wouldn't have left home empty handed. They took their food with them. But food was scarce in those days, so they were a bit worried. So they kept the food a little bit tucked away because they only had enough for themselves. Some people think what happened that day was they opened their food supplies and they shared what they had with all those around them. Everybody was inspired to share. That was the, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Just a thought that I like to think about. I'll leave that with you. I want to thank you for tomorrow. It's $5 Mufti. Dig deep. These people need us. I know there is a temptation to wear your greys and not participate. Another temptation to wear your greys and pop back to the boarding house at morning tea and stick your mufti on and think, hey, I got away with it. Don't do that. Think of these people who are trying to help, okay? Dig deep tomorrow. Thank you for what you will do tomorrow and just encourage each other with this. This is going to make a big difference to the lives of people in this city and in Cambodia. Kia ora. Let us pray. Please bow your heads in prayer. God of the harvest, God of creation, you have blessed this planet with abundant life, and through nature itself you provide for everyone of your creation's needs. We give you thanks for the fruits of the forest, the oceans, the farms, and the rivers. We give thanks for all those who grow, cultivate, produce, and distribute food for the nations and peoples of the world. We give thanks for our food and for those who provide for our needs. We pray for all those who go hungry today, and we pray for all those who seek to feed the hungry. Keep us mindful of the complexity and inequality that exists when it comes to the sharing of the world's food resources, both of the work of the Serve in Hamilton and Flame in Cambodia, our partners in service who today work hard to feed the hungry in their care. Inspire those who have more than they will ever need to not build higher fences, but rather build bigger tables from which to share with others. In the name of the one who has inspired us to feed the hungry for thousands of years, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We now have time to silent prayer and reflection. We say together the words of the Lord's Prayer in English. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Fraser. Just a couple of notices from me, and then Ryan's gonna share one as well. Uh, service, thank you to all those who are engaged with Over the Fence at the moment. Refugee Centre is on 
uh, tonight, and Ryan will talk about Thursday's arrangements and the Alpha Group. That's on in here tomorrow evening. Don't forget to sign out from your houses. Make sure your prep's up to date before you come over. Uh, what can I show? A few of you have put your hands up for that. Don't forget, go to their website. You can find out the opportunities for, for service there. That's um, not this weekend, the weekend after. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm just going to hand over to, to Ryan. Hey guys, just a quick reminder about the Rock toy appeal going on. So Rock are asking for any kind of toys after the box of toys they had last year got sold in the Twilight Gala. Have a ravage of your house through Easter and we ask if you could please bring something you don't use anymore so the children at Rock can enjoy it and have some fun. We'll set up a box outside the chapel meeting room so you can drop them off without worrying about carrying them all day. The Rock team would appreciate it, but the kids would more. And also, uh, if you're rostered for service tomorrow or Thursday after school in the pavilion, it's still on at this point of time. So, cheers. And just a quick word about uh, our Thursday service. It's our Easter service, a big one. It's um, a communion service. It's bread, it's wine. A lot of people ask, can I participate? Do I have to participate? It's your decision, okay? This table doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to the school, it belongs to God. Okay, if you feel that you want to participate in that sacred meal of bread and wine and communion, then you are welcome to do so. Okay, and I'll say a bit more about that on Thursdays. Also, Easter, it's our annual house joke competition. We've not done it in here since 2019. We did it online last year. So each house, uh, house leaders know this will be providing a joke and someone to tell that joke and you guys through our cleverly designed uh, digital clapometer will decide upon the winner of that, okay? So that's Thursday, so make sure you've got your chapel appropriate joke and it's not as easy as you think to find a chapel appropriate joke. I should know, I've been trying for years. So when you find out what your joke is, make sure you've got somebody to tell the joke and bring that up on Thursday. Again, have a great Mufti tomorrow. Thank you. You change the world by doing things like this. It makes a huge difference. Let's pray God blessing, God's blessing upon us. So may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us, be upon all those whom we love, care for, and upon all those who go hungry today, and those who seek to feed them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to sing our final hymn. I think we'll sing the first and the last two verses. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. So we conclude our service with the words of the grace. Kyoto kiatato katoa, te atafai o te tato auriki a ihu kuraiti, me te araha o te atua, me te fifi nātai tanga.
Kitawaru Tapu, Ake, 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 Amine. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Be strong, be happy, be holy. Have a great day and a great Mufti tomorrow. Thank you.